Honestly, I hit my rock bottom. So I went on this journey of figuring out my gut health and I was still eating all the plants. I was still eating, you know, healthy, but I still didn't feel good. I was like, I need to do something extreme. Let's try this carnivore diet that everybody talks about. I eliminated all the plants and in four days, all my bloating, gassiness, and constipation that was had, having me hurled over in pain went away. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. If you'd like to support us some more, you can explore our homemade natural skincare products at purelytallow.com. Thank you so much for supporting my small business. Hey everybody, welcome to the Carnival Revolution. I'm Serena and today my guest is Lindsay Barnett and Lindsay and I met on Instagram and Lindsay's got a good story of healing and weight loss. You might know her as Gut Punch Mommy on Instagram and TikTok. And so Lindsay, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So I like to start with people's stories. Um, and I have seen you've just been so strong in your posts on Instagram with Carnivore and with 75 Heart. I know it's a tough challenge because I did it last year and just started it again this year. So I'm excited to hear about that too. But let's start with your journey and how you became a carnivore. Yeah. So I don't know how far we want to go back, but it all started all the way, back, all the way, so all the way, all the way back. I'm going to go all the way back to middle school. Go for I, it was an overweight kid. And it was a struggle for me because I was in a family that was all thin. And I struggled a lot with body dysmorphia and issues. So for me, the diet culture was really wrapped up in my mindset. And I didn't know kind of a healthy platform on how to manage my weight. So go through high, go through high school, go through all the things. I then got in shape when, um, after college. So I gained weight in college. I got in shape afterwards and I did all the diet things, you know, the restrictive diets, the not so healthy things. And then I then moved into, yeah. So I was an overweight kid, struggled all through high school and never knew how to really do things in a healthy way. So it was always all in or all out. Same and here. Yes. So I was a big runner come after college, I got into running and, and restrictive dieting never felt good. Um, I got really thin, but I called myself skinny fat because I was eating all the vegetables, all the lean proteins, always feeling bloated, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and never liked my body. So it was that extreme of being thin, but having no muscle tone and just not healthy. So then had kids. I gained 60 pounds with my first daughter. I just all or nothing, right? Yeah. I, I went overboard. I ate all the carbs. I was still healthy though. I was raised by an almond mom. So I did not get fat off of the standard American diet. I overate eating healthy grains and all the, it wasn't processed food. I, I rarely ever go out to eat and eat at a fast food restaurant, but you can overeat healthy foods. And I overdid it in both of my pregnancies. And I had a really hard time after my second one to lose the weight. I really started to hover and um, I kind of hit my rock bottom where I was just starting to, I had a lot of postpartum depression. I had a lot of joint pain, a lot of inflammation. I just, my self-confidence and I was very depressed. I didn't like who I was and I struggled with my babies. But then I also had this mentality where I was like, okay, I've been to the extreme where I've been very thin. I didn't like my body. So now I'm going to try to accept myself like body positivity and I'm raising daughters. So I want them to see that they don't, it doesn't matter what they look like. But I was lying to myself. I was telling all these people body t positivity. And in the inside, I just felt terrible. So mm -hmm. I got on this journey of I am really going to take this seriously. I hit my rock bottom and I am going to figure out my, my gut health because I knew that that was stemming from all the issues that I was having. So I went on this journey of figuring out my gut health and I was still eating all the plants. I was still eating, you know, healthy but I still didn't feel good. I was losing the yeah. weight, which helps, but I still could not figure it out. So this past summer, I was like, I need to do something extreme. Let's try this carnivore diet that everybody talks about. Uh -huh. I eliminated all the plants and in four days, all my bloating, gassiness, and constipation that was had, having me hurled over in pain went away. 
So I'm like, what the heck? There is something about this. And let's try a 30 day challenge. 30 days turned into eight months. So eight months later, I am still ranting and raving about how carnivore has worked for me. And I just started the 75 hard challenge. I'm on day 74 and I continued doing a carnivore lifestyle along with it. And that was the easiest part of 75 hard because I've already been doing it. So, right. Yeah. That's what I found too last year when I did it. And I want to go back to the, like the beginning of your story where it started in middle school. I did too. I bought my first diet pills when I was 12 and was literally on a diet every day, basically my whole life. I mean, I've just always been on some sort of of a diet. I gained 80 with my first child. So same as you, like all or nothing. I gained 80, I think 80, 50, 40, 30 with my four children. So by the last one, I kind of had it figured out, (laughs) but, um, but then, you know, you, it's hard to lose the weight because you, it's not, because I don't, I didn't have a healthy relationship with food. And so how, what was that like for you after you had your babies and how did you get the weight off? And like, because you also didn't have a healthy relationship with food. So was that hard? It was very difficult. And I think if you're somebody who has a food addiction, you will always go in this like wave of deprivation to starvation to then overindulging. And and that was, I never had this healthy relationship on how to be satisfied. So I used food as either a discipline or a reward. And, you know, you'd lose and gain the same 20 pounds back and forth because it was always a reward and a punishment. Punishment. Exactly. So it's just, I think for the first time since starting carnivore, I finally knew what it felt like to be satisfied to break through cravings. And I no longer had this fight with food. It was true food freedom. And I think it's hilarious how people want to come on the attack that you're on, you're on such a eliminating diet that how could you have food freedom by only eating meat and fat? And I'm like, you haven't tried it. Yeah, that's right. You haven't tried it. Yep. Anybody who is cynical about the carnivore diet just hasn't tried it. And also they haven't done research because if you do just a little bit of research, you will find that all of the information we've been given is not true. Saturated fat is not bad for you. Vegetables are not the best things to eat. There is so much misinformation out there. Every single video, and I'm sure you get it too, every single video I post, there is somebody saying, you're going to die of a heart attack or or my favorite is you're going to get diabetes. Mm-hmm. How could you possibly get diabetes from something that has no sugar or carbs in it? That's it's actually impossible to get diabetes like that. So um, I wish people would do research before they criticize. And for those people out there, like I was like you tried everything, right? So if you're somebody who's tried everything, why not just give the carnivore diet a try, right? Exactly. 30 I mean, days, try it for 30 days and then tell me you don't want to keep going. <laughs> yeah, right. Because most people do a 30-day challenge and then keep going in in some manner or another. Some people will add a few things in, see how it makes them feel, and end up in like a keto bore kind of spot, which is mostly carnivore, a little bit of low-carb vegetables and fruits maybe, but not as many as you would have if you were doing keto. So I think a lot of people, though, stick with a low-carb diet because when you do that 30 days and then you add some things back in, you realize just how much like garbage they make you feel. Mm -hmm. So do you cheat at all? Do you cheat at all? Do you ever eat anything that is not carnivore? So my kind of path that I've been on in the last eight months, the first 30 days, I was strict. I was not even eating a lot of dairy, nothing. I was just doing animal, you know, proteins, fats, everything was to the book. Then after my 30 days, I wanted to test the animal base, the Paul Salandino, you know, adding raw honey, the organic fruits and some raw dairy. So I tried kind of testing that. But when I say testing, I'm like 80%. So eight days, I am doing strict carnivore. Two days, I am testing some new fruits. And I'm kind of giving it some time to see what I tolerated. And in that time, I was able to test that like, there are some fruits that I couldn't tolerate, like mangoes and pineapple. And some of those things like spiked my blood sugars way too much. And I was like, okay, that doesn't work for me. But then there were other things like blackberries and avocados that I did just fine with. So I kind of played around with that for a few months. And then when I was like, I'm going to do 75 hard, I'm going to stick to the first 25 days. I'm going to do the animal based, but I'm still not kind of going overboard with the fruits or the honey. I'm still primarily carnivore. And then the next 25 days, 
I wanted to just do standard carnivore. And the last 25 days, I wanted to test the lion diet. And humbly, I lasted nine days and I I realized that that didn't work for me. So I just know that like standard carnivore was working the best for me. And now that my challenge is finishing up, I honestly don't know if I want to play around too much with adding things back, but it is kind of a fun testing game just to see what you can tolerate and what you can't. Yeah, I've tested artichokes um, for myself where you, you know, you steam an artichoke and you pull the leaves off and dip them in butter. Have you seen people do that? Like how you eat a I have, artichoke? yeah. Love it. And my kids love it. So they grew up doing that with me. We all sit around the table. And so it's like a special thing. And I do it with my kids. Um, So that's just like the last few months. Um, And it's not all the time. It's just on occasion. Um, But that's been a fun thing to kind of test. And I haven't had any reactions to it or anything like that. And there was something you said I was going to ask you about. Oh, yeah. Um, So then I, I did the lion diet last year for 30 days. And it was great. It was hard. It was definitely hard to do. I felt really amazing on it. And then I tried it again a couple of times over the summer and gave up like you after like nine days or 11 days. It just, I don't know, it just felt so tedious. And I do love the way I feel. I do think I feel my best on beef. And if I go a few days where I eat very limited beef compared to normal, I can definitely tell a difference. So beef definitely is the best meat for carnivore, meat for anybody really. And it has so many vitamins and nutrients and it. it's a superfood, most nutrient dense superfood that there is. So I definitely recommend high beef, but um, the lion diet is special. That's for sure. Yeah. And I think the reason I was kind of trying to evaluate, evaluate why this wasn't working for me. And I really think it comes back to people's why. And if somebody is struggling with an autoimmune disease, I think the lion diet really helps you stay on track because you have a bigger why. Yeah. But because my why is not an autoimmune disease and I'm not really trying to lose any more weight, it was really hard for me to be like so restrictive and have those old feelings of kind of eating behaviors, not have food freedom where I'm obsessing about food now. And I didn't like how I felt. I was like, I, I don't want to be in that space of obsessing about food when I know that I don't feel that way on standard carnivore. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. So would you say that in the past you were a food addict or a carb addict before? I do think so, but I've always been very disciplined. So like when I say I'm all in and I'm all out, I would always stick to plans. I've done whole 30 and I've been successful every single time. It's it's very easy for me to stick to a challenge and stick to something that I say I'm going to do. But then when I'm done, that I fall off. So this is going to be a really interesting to see how I do now after 75 hard. And I see myself picking up another challenge in April just so that I keep the momentum going. Um, but yeah, I do see that I have carb addictions, but I also have really good discipline. So as long as I like stick to that, I can do it. So in the beginning, when you first started carnivore, this is a little bit out of order. I should have asked you this before, but at the beginning, when you started carnivore, was it difficult for you? Did you have a hard transition or were you able to just kind of do it because you said you would? I did it cold turkey and I did. I had a couple of those keto flu symptoms, but I think because I was eating primarily a whole food based diet before I didn't have a lot of those detox symptoms that some might have who's doing a standard American diet or who eats highly processed foods. So I had a couple days where I was like, I really need some electrolytes. I am kind of struggling here, but it really wasn't as bad as some others. My husband, he was doing carnivore with me and he had a little bit of more the tummy issues running to the bathroom than I did. So I think it just depends on kind of how how your diet was prior to starting carnivore. And what about, so you mentioned your husband was carnivore. I guess he's not 100% carnivore now, right? He is very much more of a ketovore. He does. I don't, he doesn't track being in ketosis, but the way he eats is primarily how I'm eating, but he drinks a little bit more or he will have some more sauces and stuff like that. He does stick to like tracking it's low sugar. It's not, you know, we keep clean food in our house, but he also is somebody who has to go do business meetings all the time. And he's just a little bit more flexible than me. Now, I know your kids are younger, um, so it might be a little bit easier for you. I have older kids and decided that this was a battle I wasn't going to win right now with them. They're all uh, older. Two of them are adults. The other two are almost adults. And so it's not a battle that I'm willing to fight and damage our relationship over. I think they'll make the decision on their own. Our oldest daughter eats very healthy and the other ones are very meat heavy. Um, but I just kind of decided I can't 
Like I can't, I was going to damage our relationship if, you know, at that age, I just couldn't, I couldn't do that to them or to me. Um, but your kids are younger. And so how has that been? What kind of diet do your kids eat? Yeah. So I, it, when I started this, me and my husband, we really started to feel the effects of ourselves, And we're like, we need to make sure that we are not just, you know, we have to pr- preach what we are doing, you know, just, or what what's the saying? Um, practice what we preach. We need to practice what we preach. And so we started to transition our children. They were always relatively healthy eaters, but no more chicken nuggets, no more mac and cheese in the house, zero sugar. And so that's been kind of a transition for them. My oldest is so good at eating meat. She calls herself a carnivore. And so we just started a whole food based diet at home, mostly animal based. And um, they've transitioned really well. My daughter, my youngest daughter has like eczema, skin issues. And just that alone has made me so happy to see the improvement with her skin by switching over to raw dairy and getting all the dyes and processed food out of the house has just been huge in like behavior and everything. So I'm a, I'm huge about keeping whole foods in the house, but they aren't carnivores. So they do eat fruit. I I don't buy vegetables though. So my kids do not eat vegetables unless, you know, they want them, but they don't ask for them. So. Yeah. It's interesting how when you remove those things, it's like, um, I saw a news clip the other day from somebody who swore their dog was a vegetarian and they put the vegetarian dog food out and the meat food. I was on the news. I can't remember who who shared it on Instagram, but it was on the news. And it was like, this lady swore her dog was a vegetarian. You put the two bowls out and the dog goes straight to the meat bowl. Right. And she's uh, like, Oh, maybe <laughs> you not. Know, like, it's just, it's interesting. Like if you don't make your kids eat vegetables, chances are they're not going to gravitate towards that. You know, they only, we only do that because that's what we've been told. We've been told fruits and vegetables are the healthiest and they're not, they're not. And so well, if you don't give those to people and make them eat them, I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, I could never give up my broccoli or I could never give up. You probably could. I mean, if you didn't eat it for a while and then you went back to eating it, you would be like, what in the world is this? Why did I think I liked it? Well, that's, I kind of started to evaluate that. I was like, why do people miss vegetables? It's, it's because you like salad dressing. It's because you like, you know, sauteing things in butter and sauces. I don't know that anybody actually like enjoys eating raw pieces of vegetables that much. So I don't know. (laughs) So when you switched, what about your like friends and family? Did they think you were a little bit cuckoo? So my family has, again, I have an almond mom. So she's always like been supportive on eating healthy. She was a little thrown off. Like, can you really not eat any fiber and vitamin C and all the typical responses that you get when people haven't done the research? But then she started doing her own research. She's also somebody who has Lyme's disease. And so she's been on this long journey of figuring out her own autoimmune diseases. So she's kind of on on board now. She actually has a holistic practice practitioner who's a carnivore. So it's very interesting how her mind has shifted and she has been very supportive. My sister, she has endometriosis and she switched over to an animal-based diet and she has had phenomenal healing results. And again, my husband, he's always been supportive. He's been doing this alongside of me and friends. I do have some friends who are just kind of like, okay, like you do you. And then they're, they're seeing the results that I I'm having. And then they're now like kind of perking up their ears. They're like, what are you doing again? You don't eat any vegetables. So, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't lost any friendships, but then again, I'm kind of an introvert anyway. So it's like my circle is kind of small. And so people kind of know that like, I do things a little kooky and different anyway. So, right. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about books? Have you read any really good books on carnivore or health that you'd like to share? Um, so I, I read the typical um, The Carnivore Diet by Sean Baker. And I, I haven't read the whole book, but The Bits and Pieces of the Proper Human Diet by Dr. Mm-hmm. Ken Berry, mm-hmm. I think is a fantastic resource for people. Um, I also, so this one is, it's not carnivore, mm-hmm. but I read um, Gut Feelings. I think is by Dr. Cole. And it has a very interesting perspective on healing the gut microbiome. And it goes far beyond just our diet. So it's not anti-carnivore. It's not pro-carnivore. But I think it's a very good perspective on people who are going down the rabbit hole of trying to heal their gut and knowing that there are so many different components that could play into our health. So you and I can be eating a carnivore diet, 
but you have different stress levels than I do, and that can play into how our body could heal. So I think that's a really good resource. It opened my eyes to kind of be a little bit more carnivore is not the only way and plant-based is not the only way. And we kind of just need to remember that. Yeah. So what does a typical day of eating look like for you right now? Oh, so I, this is different for a lot of people, but I am such an intuitive eater. And some days I don't eat until two o'clock in the afternoon. I'll have a half a pound of ground beef and four eggs and a ton of butter. And I might then be totally satisfied for the rest of the day. Or especially around my cycle, I'll I'll eat three times a day and I'm eating at like seven o'clock in the morning. And I just need that extra bit of like butter coffee and, you know, just kind of extra fats in my diet. And people are just kind of like, seriously, you don't track anything. But I intuitive. I've never been in tune with my body until carnivore. And it has just been totally mind blowing that some days I eat a lot. Some days I don't eat very much, but yeah, I, and I always try to kind of cater it around to eating with the family. So at six o'clock, you know, we rotate between ribeye steaks, chicken wings, salmon, try to get as much seafood as I can, but I'm allergic to shellfish, but it's, it's, you know, trying to get some variety in there and always high in fat. Yeah. So if you had one piece of advice for people who are just getting started, what would it be? Oh, one piece of advice, don't compare your journey to somebody else's. I think so many people, they want to ask me like, what do you eat in a day? Tell me how many calories I'm supposed to eat, how many grams of protein. And I'm like, I just think you need to play the testing game because everybody, your why is completely different on why you're doing carnivore. And not everyone's going to get the same results because you have a different healing journey. So just try so hard not to compare your results to someone else, you know, trust the process and just keep pushing through and eat your meat and fat and electrolytes. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much. It was so great to get to know you better and to be able to share your story. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Carnivore Revolution.